th this is a bundle of coppiced hazel. We call each individual piece a rod and it's cut from carefully managed coppices every seven to eight years and that produces these long straight lengths of hazel with very few knots which is what we need for weaving hazel hurdles. The first stage in making a hurdle is to select one of the rods of, of hazel and to split it right down the middle which is done like this. There are in fact several different ways of um, splitting or cleaving hazel and the way I do it, being careful to start the split in the middle of the rod, I open the split just using the bill hook and then I feed the rod onto this post and steering it all the time to avoid the split running out to one side or the other I just run down the whole length of the rod forcing it through any knots right to the end of the rod and that's it, one rod split into two halves. Then the split rods are actually woven into the hurdle. They're woven in and out of the nine vertical pieces which all of these things have local names and um, generally these verticals are called sails and the horizontals, the one that you weave with, they're called ethers or weavers. And every three or four inches in the height of the hurdle, these ethers are twisted back and woven back into the hurdle the other way and that of course is what holds the whole hurdle together. There are no nails or screws or anything like that in a hurdle. The whole thing is held together by the twists around the end. The hurdle is made in a heavy piece of timber um, called a mould um, here I'm using a, a, an old railway sleeper, but any heavy piece of timber will do. And in that heavy piece of timber, we have nine holes drilled, not in a straight line, but in a slight curve. And into those nine holes go vertical members called sails. Um, they go right through the, the heavy timber and stick into the ground so that they're relatively firm. And then all of the horizontal members are woven in and out of those nine verticals. Various different regions where hurdles are made have their own distinctive styles of hurdle making and even within those regions individual hurdle makers will have their own methods. I like to finish the top of my hurdles with four round rods and when they are all in position the ends are finished by forming what we call a hurdle makers knot and that consists of twisting one of these rods right round the end sail. It goes round twice, like so. And I will then 
trim this off and tuck it back into the weave so that it will never come undone. I just trim that to length. And then making this piece as flexible as I can. Having opened out the rods, I will just tuck that in. And that is firmly fixed and, and will never come, come undone. And the same thing happens at the other end of the hurdle. They are all trimmed off as are the spikes on the bottom, the bits that stick through the, um, the, the heavy piece of timber. And that's your finished hurdle. Wattle hurdles were of course used by the thousand for penning sheep in the heyday of sheep farming, particularly across the south of England. Um, unfortunately nobody uses them for that purpose now. And Hurdles are now almost exclusively used in gardens as fencing, screening um, and for windbreaks. Um, they're particularly suitable for that because they allow a certain amount of wind to, to pass through them. And how much does a hurdle like this cost? I currently charge £14 per vertical foot. This is a four foot high hurdle. So four times 14 in pounds. <laughs>